How does he do it? How does he talk to the fire? Still haven't put it together? I have. Get it look at you. Welcome to the bench. In our next installment on our ancient wheat series, uh, you know, this is smoking grains. Now, I showed you the, the smoker upgrade and the smoker build, and I just want to finish that out by doing a video of showing you how to smoke some grains. How does it work? What does it do? What does the smoke impart on the grain, and how do we get that, that perfect smoke? So, you know, I grew up in deep south Texas. Uh, Dad worked for one of the largest cattle ranchers in Texas, and and as such, you know, barbecue and and cooking outdoors was just his thing. The man lived for spending a weekend, throwing some stuff on the pit, having a cigar, and and just sitting back with a whiskey and just relaxing on the weekends. I mean, that was his that was his thing. So he was Mister Barbecue in my world, and and most of my friends and and family growing up. That's, that's how we looked at him. So you know, rubbed off. Um, I'll tell you that, that growing up, you have a deep understanding of fire and smoke and wood and, and how to use those different characters to, to create a barbecue. You know, it's not all just throw something on a pit or use some charcoal in that ranching and, and Hispanic heritage. We, we don't, uh, we don't take lightly to, you know, just throwing some charcoal out there. It's a process. It's a hours of getting the pit ready before you can do anything. So that's led into my my career and, and um, you know, those kind of thoughts of, of how you put that passion into it. It's led into my hobby with smoking grains. You know, let, let's talk about that a little bit. A few of the tips that I can tell you, you want to use the heartwood. You know, we talked in the other video about the white acrid ring. Don't use that white acrid ring. You know, use the, the heart of the log. Unless you want that. I mean, the acrid ring, that ring is going to give you an acrid smoke. It's going to give you a real bitter tannic smoke. Now, that could play really well in a in a whiskey. If you're trying to mimic or, or mock an Isla, you could really get some of that acrid and that deep, dark, grungy flavor out of that type of smoke. If you're doing a single malt and you want some oils and some phenolics, man, you can really get that in there with that. But for the most part, we want that sweet, that, that robust, deep flavor of the smoke that you're going to get out of the center of the, of the wood itself. So I would recommend don't use it. Um, save that for your barbecue pit. Get you an axe and cut that all off or a saw and, and just save it for your barbecue pit. You know, let the smoker come up to temp. That's another thing that, that's real key is, is the wood is sap laden and there's a lot of chemical compounds in that sap that are going to give it different types of flavors. Right off the bat, you want to get that oily stuff out, let it burn, let the white smoke go away and it'll, it'll go into a light gray. When you see a light gray smoke, you're starting to get that sweet smoke. You can actually smell it. It's the difference between when you first light your barbecue pit and you open it up, it burns your eyes and your nose. But you give it about 30 minutes, throw some wood on it. it it's really sweet smelling. It, it has that just that deep, robust flavor and that smell. It, you know, it's outstanding. That's what we're looking for. The other thing is dry your grains really well before you get ready to put them into the smoker because you want those grains to be, you're going to spritz them and you want them to suck that oil and that, that tar and that all of that phenolic flavor and any of the smoky flavor and the sweet flavors of that smoke, you want it to adhere and and bind and stick to the grain and get in all the cracks and crevices of the grain so that when you go to mash in, all of that's going to be imparted in your whiskey or your beer mash. I had an order of um, five pounds of red wheat, five pounds of, of rye, uh, specifically a caramel rye. So I malted five pounds of rye for for one of my uh, one of my beer buddies, we took it to a caramel, 
and then we smoked it. He wanted that that deep smoke. He wants a really heavy, heavy smoke because he's going to use that in the product that he's making. The red wheat was the same way. We took it to a, it was more of a brown. It wasn't all the way to a caramel, but we smoked it. So I, I can tell you what you're going to see in these follow on clips. I've got, I've got a bunch of clips to kind of walk you through the steps. You know, we, it was on the smoker for about eight hours and uh, used that 30 year old heartwood mesquite. So the logs I use are from huge trees that have, that fell down years and years ago. And, and, and dad's, had them out there just seasoning and they they've been sitting for 20 something years 30 years so they're well seasoned and, and ready for what we're going to do with it right let's jump in and i'll start showing you the, the, the different clips that i took through this whole process and, and just kind of walk you through how to get some of that good smoke and that rich deep smoke into a a grain right so that we can use that in a mash uh, before we do, you'll notice over my shoulder, there's a, a box back here. That's a co an up and coming video. It's a second smoker I'm going to do as a review. Um, it's from Smokehouse Products, and um, we're going to use that little pellet smoker. They're about $11 on, on Amazon. The pellet smoke tube, you literally light it on one end, and it'll burn its way through five to six hours. It provides a really rich, heavy smoke into your firebox. That, that little chief is perfect perfect for you guys that are wanting to do some two maybe four pound batches uh it comes with four trays and each tray you can probably put about maybe a half pound to a pound on each tray and and be able to to get a good segue into learning how to smoke you could pick them up on amazon for you know 60 to 80 bucks sometimes about a hundred dollars i've seen them on ebay used for 40 to 60 bucks so we're going to review that when i talk to tyler at uh at Smokehouse Products, you know, I told him, I, I said, I do want to review it. I, I think a lot of the folks that I know are going to enjoy seeing it. I don't want to go too much detail because we do have a video coming up on that. Keep an eye out. That video is coming up, and, and I, I encourage you to watch it. It's going to be real fun. So without further ado, let's get into the clips, and uh, I'll add some details in on, you know, with some, some keynotes and things like that as we go through these clips so that you guys can just follow along and understand exactly how to do this. I've got uh, right at five pounds of red spring wheat. So we've got it on the trays. And you know, one thing you want to do, you want to you want to kind of just make some little valleys and peaks uh, and then wet it down. And we've got another, this is a five pounds of rye. So this is a just a typical Pilsner rye. Both of these are at a Pilsner, you know, a pale level. So we're gonna go ahead and get these. I got five trays. We're gonna get those in. We got the smoker hot. I'll cut to that here in a minute and uh, and show you the smoker. It, it's, it's already going pretty good. One thing to note when, you know, like I said, you want peaks and valleys, but you, you also need to wet your grains. You, you know, the, the moist grains are gonna suck up that smoke. They're going to help that, that smoke re retention onto the grain itself. The smoke is an oil, you know, it's oily, and it, it, it likes to have little eddies and breaks and cuts and things that it can get into when that oil permeates. We're going to want, we want a very smoky, smoky grain. You don't want them sopping wet, but, you know, you want them kind of wet to the touch just to be able to... Uh, to let that smoke permeate and, and kind of stick to it really well. You can see that if you look right there at the rye, I've got some, some dry areas. If I flip it over, there's some dry under here. I'm gonna to wanna to make sure all of that's kind of moist and wet before I put it in. So we'll take a look. I've got the smoker going and you can see he's, uh, he's about the same. I mean, you know, it's 92 out here already this morning. So, you know, it, it, this is Texas. It is what it is. I had to move it. Uh, the smoke was coming into the garage, which was kind of getting into the house. But look at that depth of that smoke already. I mean, we can't even see in there yet. It's been on maybe 20 minutes. I'm going to go ahead and get these trays loaded. And then we'll, uh, we'll cut back to watching some of this thing happen. Well, so there you have it. We've got the, the rye up top. And we've got the wheat on the bottom. Got the weed on the bottom three. You can, I mean, you can already see the amount of smoke coming out of here is really good. So, it's not going to take these things, but you know, I, I'm going to leave them in about four hours, um, just because I want that. I want that heavy smoke on this grain. You know, this is for an order 
that uh, the guy wants a really smoky a smoky beer that he's going to do other things with so when you get to that point you want it really really smoky so that's what we're aiming for we'll keep checking back and and periodically i think we may come in one more time and wet this down but for the most part you know your first um your first damp spray on this is going to be good for the for the majority of the time we may come in at about the two hour mark and just kind of toss it a little bit and spray it a little more and see how it looks see if we're getting that patina and we can feel that oil on the grains but until then there's not a whole lot to do but sit and wait all right well the smoked rye and smoked wheat is done and you can see see how shiny those grains are and they're dark red you can see the red on the rye and and it's shiny as well so that's the oils that imparted out of that mesquite smoke. So if you take a closer look, look at us down here, and we'll take a real close look at, at the uh, the weed itself. Let's see if we can get it to focus in. You can see how dark it is. And, you know, especially right around some of these grains here, you look at that grain, it, it took that smoke really well. We come over here and look at this one. The rye, I mean, you can see where the rye took the smoke extremely well on some of these grains right here. They're, they're really dark in color. They picked up that, that oily mesquite smoke. Thanks for watching, guys. Had a blast doing this for you. And if you liked what you saw, hit that like and subscribe button. And remember, we have the review of the Little Cheap Smoker coming up. So hit that bell icon. You don't want to miss it.